coming up tonight on TV5 News. I'm Mark Espadakis, and I'll have new information about faculty contract negotiations. That's coming up. The Clarion County Sheriff has submitted his budget request for next year. We'll have the details. Hi, this is Kristen Stanton. Will snow be in our forecast for later on in the week? Details coming up in the TV5 Weather Center forecast. Also find out what caused a major tie-up of traffic in downtown Philadelphia in our national news. I'm Martise McCree, and coming up later in sports, how did the Steelers fare on Sunday? Details coming up. Plus, did the Golden Eagles sort of victory this past weekend? I'll have this and more coming up in sports. Plus, Gary Martin will be here with this week's financial beat. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. This is TV5 News, bringing coverage closer to home. Good evening. I'm Brian Cook. This past week, there have been new developments and negotiations between the faculty union and the state system of higher education. And I'm Carrie Lapu. Mark Despotakis joins us live in the newsroom with an update. Mark? Thanks, Carrie. The latest word on negotiations in the contract talks between APSCOF and the state system of higher education is that, is that talks came to an end Saturday night with no final agreement reached. I have been told that talks are scheduled to resume tomorrow morning in Harrisburg. Now, as you may recall, Thursday is the date that APSCUF is set to be the first day of a possible strike. That doesn't mean they will definitely strike. APSCUF has agreed to give 48 hours notice in the event of a work stoppage. Last week, when I spoke with Clarion University President Dr. Diane Reinhardt, she had this comment about the possibility of a strike. I'm optimistic about the negotiations. I hope that they will be uh, coming to a, a conclusion, a successful conclusion, within this two-week time frame that we have. Um, and I, I... We attempted to speak with Sue Trainer from Abscuff Clarion, but she was unable to speak with us because she was on a conference call in regards to the strike. And if you would like to keep updated on strike negotiations, visit these websites, www.abscuff.com and www.shechan.edu. We will keep you updated on the developments on our news tomorrow night. Live in the newsroom, I'm Mark Espadakis. Back to you, Carrie. Court clerks on the county's unionized court system met with county rep representatives and an arbitrator to decide unresolved issues concerning their 1999 contract. Union steward Donna Oakes told the Clarion News that certain members met with a county consultant on labor issues and an arbitrator on October 12th. Ox explained to the union that the union chose to go to an arbitrator after the commissioners and union were unable to agree on certain items in the year-long contract. The state legislator is considering a bill that would allow Clarion Borough to recoup some of the real estate tax revenue it loses because of the university's tax-exempt status. The proposed law would provide grants for municipalities. Clarion Mayor Robert Yoho has long advocated the state payments in lieu of taxes for university host communities. Yoho told the Derrick that police and street department services reach into the university that cost the borough money. Clarion County Sheriff Vern Smith presented his budget request for next year. Vern Smith's request includes a purchase of a transcript cruiser and van. The request budget is for 2000 is over $135,000. Also noted in the budget was an increase for the sheriff's telephone expenses. Smith hopes to purchase a cellular phones for deputies who travel outside of the area. A Venango County jury must decide who is to blame in the death of a man last March. David Penwall is accused of murder in the shooting death of 77-year-old Frank Makovich. Police say Penwall was guarding the back door during the robbery at Makovich's home on March 3rd of 1998. In the opening statements yesterday, the prosecution maintains that a group of individuals, including Penwall, should face charges. The start of the Department of Ar Environmental Protection Mine Reclamation Project near Strattonville is getting off to a slow start. DEP spokesperson Darlene Crawford tells our newspaper exchange partner, The Clarion News, that a visit to the site has been scheduled for tomorrow. The DEP issued a call in July for proposals to treat acid mine discharges at two former mining sites approximately one mile north of Strattonville in Clarion Township. Oil City Manager Tom Rokovich and Police Chief Rob Moyer report this evening that the arrangement with Oil City and PennDOT regarding the use of municipal parking ramp is working well. 
The Oil City Derrick reports that the terms of the deal include 54 spaces in the ramp are reserved for PennDOT's use. Another 90 spaces would be reserved on the roof of the parking complex. Moyer said so far space has not been an issue. Then again, we have not lived through construction season. A five mile per hour speed limit isn't effective for some of Knox residents consider a dangerous alley. One resident said that he has been involved in a head-on crash and he has witnessed a child on a bicycle being hit. Council President Stan McCleary suggests that the residents avoid the curve and enter the alley from another direction. The Knox Borough Council is still examining options to help improve the safety of the road. Three area tourism promotional bureaus will be merging soon. The Magic Forest Visitor Bureau, the Elk County Bureau, and the Forest County Tourist Bureau will form one organization which will service five counties, including Clarion. Pennsylvania Secretary of Community and Economic Development, Sam McCullough, praised the merger, emphasizing the importance of regional partnerships and economic development er efforts. The next time you fly into Clarion County, you will notice a brighter runway. The Clarion News is reporting that the Clarion County Airport has received a $350,000 grant from the Federal Aviation Administration and Clarion County. The money will be used to upgrade the runway lights and to install an emergency generator. The project is several years away pending the results of a study for runway expansion already in progress. An Oil City student turned the table on his classmates last week. Zach Weber, a senior at Oil City High School, had the opportunity to teach at the calculus class when the regular instructor had to attend a seminar. The chance arose during a lack of substitute teachers in the Oil City School District. When asked about his teaching experience and the possibility of entering the field, Weber told the Oil City Derrick, I think I might like to be a professor someday. Coming up after the break, more news coming out of Yugoslavia. We'll have the details. Plus, Christian Stanton will be here with your weekend weather forecast. It's all ahead as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. In the early years, young children cannot stand on their own. Uniting parents and children is an important part of the life of a community. Stand for Children encourages people to make a personal commitment to stand for the health of children. 300,000 Americans marched in Washington, D.C. last June to support Stand for Children Day. Stand for Children seeks to lift the belief that children need our help to stand. I'm the man. It's my birthday. Exercised lately. <sighs> go for a mouthful. Go for the fun. Come on, go for go cake. Go for cake for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes. And it's go for, go for, go for cakes. Open wide. Stuff your face. There's always room for more. Go for cakes. Oh. And tea the box is there Explode. Exercise lately. Till you explode. Sad looking back now, the things you go through in life. Scary. The worst thing about being on welfare was it's what they really wanted. I had to get a better life for my girls and myself. I got off welfare. I got a good job. Make me the happiest mother in the world. I live for my girls. We're not asking you to hire everyone on welfare, just one. This is TV5 News at 8, anchored by Christy Desort, Brian Cook, Kristen Stanton with TV5 Weather, Martise McCree with Sports. Now, from the news team bringing coverage closer to home, this is TV5 News. Welcome back to TV5 News. I'm Carrie LaPoo, filling in for Christy Desort tonight. Jeff Say joins us with a look at Clarion University News. Jeff? In Fisher, the Clarion Call. Articles that were covered included a motion that was approved to revise the catalog at the faculty senate meeting. A new academic summer 2002 calendar was approved. The summer session will be pre session May 13th through May 31st. Summer 1 will run from June 3rd and July 3rd, and Summer 2 will be July 8th through August 9th. The first day of class will be scheduled for Monday, August 26th. Foodstock 99 came to a close as more than 38,000 food donations were collected for 12 local food pantries throughout the Clarion area. 
Clary will be entered in the record books for a community that collected the most donations on a 24-hour period. According to Brianna Frisk, AmeriCorps member and student coordinator for the Community Service Learning Office, the record was set because of certain guidelines that had to be followed and was completed by the committees. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the scoop on the newest Clarion call due on newsstands October 21st. For TV5 News, I'm Jeff Say. A negotiation session will be held on October 27th in regards to the North Clarion School Board's dilemma with teacher contracts. According to the Clarion News, Board President Scott Dom called a session to discuss such matters. Educators in the district have not had a contract since June 30th and hope to come to an agreement soon. An update on a story we have been following for you. Closing arguments in the case of a man accused of killing a police officer ended this afternoon. 19-year-old Timothy Williams is on trial for shooting Kane police officer Stephen German. The jury is expected to begin deliberating tomorrow. Prosecutors have said they will seek the death penalty. A Westmoreland County woman sentenced to jail for tying up a social worker during a supervised visit is being praised for being a good mother. Judge Deborah Pezzi said yesterday that Tracy Garris is a good mother. Garris and her husband tied the social worker to the chair with duct tape last spring and fled with the children. Judge Pezzi said that Garris' husband is the mastermind behind the plan, not his wife. A Cambria County man has been ordered to stand trial for first-degree murder in the death of a companion. Police say that Ryan Matheson allegedly killed Michael Kuslavik during one of their twice-monthly run drug runs to Harrisburg. Also, according to police, the two stopped their car to switch drivers on June 8th, returning from a drug run, and that is when police say Matheson shot Kuslavik in the back. Two children whose mother was killed during a custody exchange are now facing front stage again this time involving their grandparents. A Beaver County judge must decide if overnight visits will be allowed or not. In January of 1998, the children witnessed their father, William Keitel Jr., shoot and kill their mother. Right now, the children are staying with their maternal grandparents who oppose the visits. A Montgomery County jury had acquitted Geraldo Gomez of selling heroin to an Altoona woman who died from an overdose earlier this year. The jury did convict the Philadelphia man of selling drugs to an undercover officer who was investigating the woman's death. Gomez will face a sentencing hearing later this month and could face up to 20 years in prison. Rush hour is not to blame for a half-mile backup on the Ben Franklin Bridge this morning in Philadelphia. A large dog created a headache for motorists as he dodged in and out of traffic. Delaware River Port Authority officers tried to corral the dog with a pole and a net, but failed. He was eventually caught after several other attempts. Police say the pooch was heading to New Jersey. I guess you can say this dog had a little bit too much of his bones being taxed. After the break, we'll take a look at national news. And Martise McCree will be here with tonight's sports report. All this and more as TV5 brings coverage closer to home. Introducing new frequent phone hours. Use the phone just eight hours a week and get this free phone cradle. Use it 12 hours and get a speaker phone. Use it 15 hours and get this cool headset. Or stay on the phone 20 hours a week. And get a pasty complexion. Flabby body. And, and a great, great new nickname, nickname at school. Exercise lately. to be there. I want my mother to be there. My hair is going to be done so beautiful. A lot of music, a nice blue dress. I want to be beautiful for every single person that goes there. If I got shot, I want to have a nice funeral. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. Help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. It's not just about making plans. It's about making a difference. And taking an interest, not just earning it. Edward Jones, it's about more than investing. It's about knowing you. Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin, located on Main Street, phone 226-7896. Welcome back to TV5 News. NATO is increasing security in Kosovo after a recent shooting in Yugoslavia. British foot soldiers patrolled the streets prior to violence. However, many Serbs took security matters into their own hands. An announcement was made yesterday about the tighter security 
because the city lacked a strong military foundation. In Detroit, the four teenage girls who were abducted are being kept in a detention center along with their kidnappers. They are being held to guarantee that they will testify in court against those accused in the ordeal. They are separated from their suspects. However, the Detroit police are considering moving the girls to another institution. A federal judge has issued a temporary restraining order against two critics of the Mormon Church. Gerald and Sandra Tanner of Salt Lake City have been accused of distributing information from the handbook on the Internet that was to be kept secret. The Tanners operate a nonprofit organization that promotes newsletters and books. Inflation has been a concern for many Americans in the recent months. Considering the rise of consumer prices, there was an increase of four-tenths of one percent on Wall Street last month. This enhancement is leaving investors worried that the rates will also be raised this year. Gary Martin joins us with tonight's edition of Financial Beat. Gary? How much money will you need when you retire? You may have heard that you'll need 60% to 80% of your annual pre-retirement income for every year of your retirement. But these are just general guidelines. The truth is, there is no one right number for everyone. To really know what you'll need in retirement, consider your individual goals. Will you earn income by starting your own business or by consulting? Will you purchase a second home and spend most of your time pursuing leisure activities? Or will you stay close to home and enjoy the time with your grandchildren? What you plan to do during retirement will greatly affect the savings investment techniques you follow before you retire. So start thinking about your personal vision for retirement and don't worry about reaching any magic numbers. With TV5's Financial Beat, I'm Gary Martin, your Clarion Edward Jones Investment Representative, member SIPC. If there is a topic that you would like discussed on the financial beat, send it to TV5 News, Becker Hall, Clarion University, Clarion PA, 16214. We are unable to answer personal questions. Kristen Standen joins us with our TV5 Weather Center with the Clarion Area Weather Forecast. Thanks, Carrie. Hi, I'm Kristen Stanton here with your TV5 Weather Center forecast for your local Clarion area. Um, let's take a look at our satellite map. You can see the rain, which is moving up from our south. It's coming in, moving north-northeast right now, which will bring in some showers later tonight and showers also tomorrow. If you take a look at our frontal map, you can see this is the front, which is moving upwards coming north, and these are the showers and the rain that will be developing and moving into our area. If you take a look at the precip map, you can see once again showers are to the south and will be moving north. If we take a look at our local radar, you can see back in here, you can see the rain once again that will be moving into our area. Let's take a look at the national highs for today. You can see across the region up here in the north, the cooler temperatures, mostly in the 50s, and some in the 40s up here in the Great Lakes area. If you take a look at our lows, you can see that is very cold throughout the, throughout the nation today, very cold, and it will be continuing to get colder throughout the rest of the week. So if you take a look at our five-day forecast now, you can see that Wednesday it will be high in the mid-60s, low in the mid-30s. Thursday it will be mostly cloudy, high in the mid-50s, low in the mid-30s. Friday, once again, we're going to have rain, high of 47, low of 36, and coming into Saturday, we're only going to have a high of about 40 and some possible snow showers, so get ready for winter to move in. And once again on Sunday, rain and some snow showers moving in. So break out those winter coats. Back to you, Carrie and Brian. Thanks, Kristen. Coming up after the break, Martise McCree will be in with your sports report. That and more here on TV5 News, bringing close coverage closer to home. Standing out from the crowd is easy when you stop in at Fashion Bug, located in a Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. Where have all the children gone? Long time passing. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. You can help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Not one more lost life. 
Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Gone to graveyards one by one. Oh, when will we ever learn? News travels fast. That's why you need the speed and accuracy of a news team that brings coverage closer to home. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night, join TV5 News for Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8. Tune in for the latest in regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8 is here on TV5. Welcome back to TV5 News. I'm Martise McCree. The Steelers broke their two-game losing streak this Sunday at Cincinnati. Running back Jerome Bettis, who looked like the bus for the first time this year, rushed for 111 yards and two touchdowns. Bettis led the Steelers to a 17-3 win over the Cincinnati Bengals. The Steelers' defense looked a lot better than last week against the Buffalo Bills. The Steelers' defense sacked Bengals quarterback Achilles Smith four times and intercepted two times. This win brings the Steelers to a record of 3-3. Three and three. The Steelers played the Atlanta Falcons in Pittsburgh on Monday night. Last night, the New York Giants beat the Dallas Cowboys in the last seconds of the game. With a score of 10-10, Tiki Barber advanced the Giants 56 yards and set up a 22-yard field goal for Brad DeLuso for the win. After 5 hours, 46 minutes, and 15 innings of play on Sunday, the New York Mets took the lead in, and the win over the Atlanta Braves in Game 5 of the National League Championship. Robin Ventura's Grand Slam, which won the game but was ruled a single, forced Atlanta into Game 6. The Braves are leading the series 3-2. In the American League, the New, the New York Yankees beat the Boston Red Sox 6-1 last night. This, advance, this advances the Yankees to the World Series. If the Mets make it to the World Series, this will be the first New York, New York World, Se World Series since 1956. In Clarion Sports, the, gold, the Golden Eagles lost another close one to Shippensburg, 32-26. Clarion had the lead at halftime, 20-17, but Chippensburg took a 30-26 to 26 lead in the fourth quarter. Doug Dudash led the Golden Eagles with 78 yards rushing. Quarterback Adam Almashi threw 13 of 33 for 142 yards. In high school sports, the Clarion Limestone Lions, Lions beat Monotaw 45-20. Clarion Limestone sophomore Dan Alderton rushed for 100 yards on 16 carries and scored five touchdowns. Alderton also ran a 60-yard interception. Another 72 yards were rushed on seven carries by Ben Brooks. That's it for sports. I'm Martise McCree. Back to you, Carrie and Brian. Now, Kristen Stanton joins us with a last look at your Clarion weather forecast. Kristen. Hi, let's take a look at once again at our weather for the next couple of days. Once again, it will be getting colder the rest of the week. Highs in the mid-50s, lows in the mid-30s. And by Friday and Saturday, we'll be having some snow showers in the area. So once again, pull out those winter coats. Thanks once again, and back to you, Carrie and Brian. Thanks, Kristen. That wraps up tonight's edition of TV5 News. Join Christy Herman and Dave Marsh tomorrow night at 8 for the latest in state, local, and national news. I'm Carrie LaPoo. And I'm Brian Cook. For the entire TV5 News team, have a good evening.